Scotland is the birthplace both of golf and the motorized golf car, invented in 1946 by a dentist named John Doc Keegan. Since the late 1950s, golf cars have become widely used on courses everywhere. They're built low to the ground to remain steady, even over the most uneven terrain. This battery-powered golf car has everything to get you around in comfort and style. It can help you with your swing, but it can get you to the next hole in a jiffy. To make a golf car, the first step is to build the frame with lightweight aluminum I-beams. They go through two separate machines to bend them into shape. Metal forms press down into vinyl and stretch it into the shape of the front and back seats. Workers cut and staple the vinyl over a plywood base covered with a layer of foam padding. They trim away the excess vinyl and set the finished seats aside. Now it's time to assemble the powertrain. Here, workers place an axle onto the differential, which rotates the wheels. They cover it with a staff ring. Then bolt the car's 48-volt electric motor onto the transaxle, the assembled transmission, differential, and drive axle. They assemble the car's frame on a fixture, starting with the driver's side, then the passenger side, then the center I-beam that holds the two sides together. They set the assembled frame onto the powertrain and bolt the car's front suspension mechanism onto it. As the car moves on to the next assembly station, a plastic underbody comes down to cover the front part of the frame. Workers now set in the accelerator and brake pedal. Then they lower the power compartment that holds the car's battery at the vehicle's rear. They connect the battery to the motor with four separate wires, then hook them up to the electric control module that commands the engine. Now they can cover the rear working parts with a plastic underbody. The underbody provides the support on which to install the car's working parts, like this pedal mechanism or the steering column. All the electric tools that apply torque are computer monitored. If the amount of torque applied at any of the 130 assembly stations is incorrect, the system prevents the car from advancing to the next station until they get it right. This eliminates any problems that might arise with over-tightened or loose bolts. Workers now tighten the battery wires, then check the accelerator. Golf cars may not attain speeds higher than 15 miles per hour, in compliance with industry regulations. Next, they set in the front and back seats that fit snugly into the molded plastic rear body, and screw in the front fascia that covers the underbody. They set the brake rod in place. Make sure it moves the brake pedal properly and tighten it. The screen located overhead indicates when they've applied just the right amount of torque. Finally, they hammer in the hubcaps and set in the front beauty panel, also made of molded plastic. The car is now fully assembled and ready to roll. The finished golf cars offload automatically from the assembly line thanks to a hydraulic lift. They get a final inspection from every angle, even under the seat. Finally, workers drive them to an outdoor lot. No worries, their aluminum chassis ensures they can endure even the harshest weather conditions. Soon, they'll carry eager golfers across courses throughout the world.